We begin tonight from the Republican senator from the state of North Carolina, Ted Budd. Senator Budd, thanks for being with us here on the Hill. Appreciate the time. We await Donald mm -hmm. Trump uh, in this hour, President Biden a couple hours from now. But let's start with what's going on in your state. Uh, the last 11 elections, Senator, Republicans won 10. Only Barack Obama was able to flip it, and that was by a third of a percent. Donald Trump going to, to North Carolina tonight. I, I hear the Trump campaign, Senator, saying, we're on the offense, we're expanding the map, but this seems fairly defensive to me. Why is he there? Look, North Carolina is tremendously important. It is a purple state, but we've consistently won it as Republicans. Let's remember 2016, Trump won it. He won it in 2020, and he's going to win it again in 2024. But you always have to put your work in in North Carolina and, and explain to the people of North Carolina from all 100 counties what your value proposition is. I mean, we're looking at a candidacy in Vice President Kamala Harris that wants to take away your gas cars. She wants to continue the policies that have led to inflation and continue the policies that have led to fentanyl devastation and crime and an open border. This is a failed vice presidency, and now she wants to take it to the presidency. And okay. she is a dangerous San Francisco liberal that's trying to win North Carolina. And it's not going to work, but I, we got to go out and remind North Carolinians about who Kamala Harris is. And that is a I dangerous hear, San Francisco I, liberal. I hear your pitch, Senator. Uh, she's reportedly thinking about your governor, Roy Cooper, as her running mate. He hasn't lost a state. He's never lost a state there uh, in your home, or never lost a race, rather, in your home state. If she taps Roy, Co Roy Cooper, doesn't that put North Carolina even more in play for Democrats? Well, they tried it with Al Gore and they tried it with John Edwards, and I don't think it'll work with Roy Cooper. So uh, good luck with that. But again, they'll have to make their decision and we'll wait and uh, weigh in when she does make that decision. You know, uh, we, we saw the protests just down the road. Again, we've been listening to the sirens here uh, outside our studio, just sort of whiz by as, as Bibi Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, was here in town speaking before Congress pro-Palestinian demonstrators uh, here in town as well. I wonder what you think the stance for Senator Harris is going to be, Senator, as at, when she gets asked about this, because this has been an issue, the issue, really, for Democrats that, that, that split the party. What do you expect to hear from her? Well, she was supposed to be sitting there right next to Speaker Johnson. That is part of her constitutional duties to be there for these these joint sessions. But she was nowhere to be found. She sent a retiring member, uh, a Democrat U.S. senator who was retiring from Maryland. So I think that's an absolute travesty that she didn't show up for the JD, greatest JD Vance, force JD of democracy Vance, though, in the Middle East. Yeah, J.D. Vance wasn't there, though, so a mistake for J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance will be, JD Vance will be meeting with him, I believe, tonight at Mar-a-Lago, and very soon at Mar-a-Lago. So that is on the calendar for him. It is a priority for him. He has a history, but we have anti-Semitism. We have weakness demonstrated by Kamala Harris. Uh, at, look, we have shown real moral clarity on this, and show has, so has J.D. Vance, and so has Donald uh, Donald Trump. Even Netanyahu gave a shout out to Donald what? Trump for the Abraham Accords, which had peace in the Middle East, and we've had nothing but chaos under the Biden-Harris policies. Exactly two hours from now, Senator, we're going to hear from President Biden. I wonder what you want to hear from the commander in chief tonight when he addresses the nation. And would you agree with Kevin McCarthy, Senator, who says Republicans calling on Biden to step aside from his role are wrong and shouldn't do so? What I can tell you is we need a real leader and we need one quickly. And I don't see that with uh, Kamala Harris and I don't see that with Pre President Biden. So we need to get to November 5th and then January 20th as quickly as we can. All right, let me let me leave you with this because there's a lot going on. Uh, Christopher Wray was up testifying up on Capitol Hill, Senator, the FBI director earlier today uh, about the events in western Pennsylvania. But there was a moment where Christopher Wray was pressed by Congressman Matt Gates about the president's a cognitive uh, state at this point in time and, and what the FBI director has witnessed. Here was Christopher Ray. I'll get your reaction on the other side. I mean, his the cognitive decline. I'm not saying he treated you unprofessionally, just maybe not picking things up as quickly as he used to. Again, I, I don't meet with him very often, uh, but what you're describing is not something that I've observed during my interactions with him. All right. After that, Senator Donald Trump then took to so social media and told and, and called on Christopher Ray to resign. Donald Trump was the one who put Christopher Ray in that position. Is Donald Trump right or wrong to call on Christopher Ray to resign? I will say there is a glaring inconsistency between what Special Counsel Herr saw. And he said somebody who is absolutely incompetent. And he documented. It. And by the way, the left won't turn over the tapes on this. The administration will is not. It, turn is he right or wrong, Senator? 
Should Christopher Ray stay in his job? I think there's a glaring inconsistency that we really need to deeply consider, and so does Ray. Is Donald Trump right for him to, to call on to, to step aside? I think he has every Donald Trump has every right to ask that. OK, uh, Senator Ted Budd, a uh, big event in your home state. Again, live look there in North Carolina. We appreciate you joining us here on the Hill. Thank you, sir.